Hello and welcome to uh, Coping with COVID. Uh, my name is Amanda Taylor and I'm a clinical therapist at Holy Family Memorial Behavioral Health. And I'm so glad you've decided to join me today to learn a new skill and strategy to kind of deal with all of the changes that have been going on in, in our lives. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, a skill that is actually meant to be more of a long term uh, thing that you can add into your life to uh, better deal with and, and cope with all of these stresses that have been going on with all the changes. Um, so this is this is a strategy that can help you to be more resilient in the face of, of all these challenges and the stress, this increased stress. So this is going to help you to just overall reduce the vulnerability, your vulnerability to some of those more uh, painful or more intense emotions um, that more maybe intense fear or anxiety that, you know, might be coming up, frustrations, anger, sadness. Um, so this is something that you can do to add to your life um, to help deal with those those emotions more effectively. So this is um, easier to remember uh, through an, an acronym. So this is A B C please. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each each different area of this. So A is about adding to your life those p positive opportunities, pleasant experiences. So it's trying to accumulate positive emotions, both short term and uh, building a life where uh, more positive things are more likely to happen. The second part is B. So that's building mastery. So it's doing things in your life that make you feel competent and effective. C is coping ahead of time. So developing uh, and rehearsing uh, a plan to cope with uh, you know, difficult things that might come up. And then the please part is about uh, multiple different ways that you can take care of your mind by taking care of your body. So I'm gonna go over each of these individual areas uh, in a little bit more detail. And before we end today, um, I'll have you start thinking of a plan as to how you might incorporate this skill into your daily life. So the, uh, the first part here, the A, accumulating positive emotions. So it's really important to build a life where you can have opportunities and um, experiences that are positive and that feel pleasant. Um, now it's a little bit harder to do that. There's a lot more restrictions um, in what we can do and where we can go. So it, it's really being uh, planful and trying to schedule in positive things to your life and being a little bit creative. Um, so it's really, you know, the goal is to try and do one thing each day that's going to be pleasant and enjoyable. And you may need to schedule that in because it can be hard to do that. It's not going to necessarily naturally happen. So some of these, you know, daily activities might be things like uh, scheduling in time to, to read a favorite book. It might be scheduling in time to um, take your dog for a walk. It might be scheduling in time to watch a, sh a show you enjoy. It might be scheduling in a time to uh, engage in, you know, a hobby that you really uh, like or eating a food you enjoy. So it's really trying to add in those little things every day um, so that you have those opportunities to experience uh, those positive emotions. Um, it's really also part of this, this pleasant and positive experiences daily is being mindful of these experiences, is really noticing that that felt good. Oftentimes we can get stuck in our thoughts. Uh, maybe, you know, we're trying to do something that's pleasant, but our mind kind of focuses on all those things that aren't going well or all the negative in life. This is uh, an opportunity to put some of those things aside. You can still deal with them later. You're going to be able to better handle those negatives and those challenges if you have uh, the, the opportunity for positive emotions. So it's really being mindful of this positive experience, really focusing your, your attention on what you really enjoy about the, this, 
this this uh, uh, activity that you're doing. And if your mind wanders, you just refocus it. Maybe it's noticing as you're taking a walk, um, you know, the the beauty of, of the, you know, what's around you, the surroundings. Maybe it's if you're enjoying time with your children, it's really focusing and participating in that moment, really noticing um, that it feels good. And so it's being mindful of the positive experience while also being unmindful of worries. You can deal with those later. Um, you know, it's being unmindful of when the positive experience might end. Sometimes we can get stuck in, yeah, we're doing something enjoyable now, but uh, the focus might be on, well, it's going to end soon. You know, things are going to be just as bad when this is over. Um, it's letting that go for that moment and really being mindful of what, you know, what's enjoyable. Um, it's also maybe letting go of uh, if you deserve this positive experience or not. Everyone deserves positive experiences and everyone deserves to have opportunities where they can be happy. If you have these daily experiences of, of happiness, it's going to help you to better deal with the challenges. So, this is the accumulating positive experiences short term, making sure every day you have something that you can enjoy. It might be 15 minutes, it might be a half hour, but making sure there's something in there. Uh, the second part of this is really trying to add in uh, enjoyable and pleasant experiences uh, long term. It's really part of that is really identifying what's going to make your life worth living. It can be hard now when you can't uh, do things that you normally would want to. You can't uh, maybe pursue, um, you know, hobbies or activities that you normally would. So you might have to be a little bit creative and start thinking about how else can I build a life worth living? What's going to make this day important? So it might be starting by thinking of uh, what are some of your values? What are some things that are important to you? Might be family, it might be recreational activities, it might be um, it, you know learning or employment. So it's really trying to think about what do I value? And how can I put that value into um, a goal that's going to help me to, to work on that value? It might be family is important. So uh, you make a plan to uh, try and you know call one family member once a week. Or it might be, hey, I'm going to spend some more time with my kids on a regular basis. We're going to do something together. So it's really trying to, to look at what are your values, what's important to you, and how can I work on that value, work on a goal to help me reach that value, that, that you know, a life that's living within those values. What can I do right now uh, to start and work on that? You might need to be creative because things are different now. You can't necessarily go and visit people, but maybe it's, I'm going to maybe send letters to family and friends that I haven't talked to, or I'm going to uh, make sure that we do phone calls if I can't see them in person. Um, so it's, it's developing what are your values and goals as to how you can reach those, those living a, you know, a life that's within those, those values, and then taking steps to, to actually work on that goal. If your life is, is you're living it consistent with what's important to you, what you value and what's a priority, and you're able to work on goals to help you to, to live that life, Overall, you're going to have some positiveness and you're going to be able to develop that uh, life worth living. So the next part of this is B. The B is building mastery. So what are you doing in your life that makes you feel competent, that makes you feel accomplished? Um, so it's really trying to add into your life things each day that can build a sense of accomplishment. And that could be small things. It could be learning a new instrument. It could be learning a, a new word. It could be learning a new language. It could be um, building on, you know, skills related to crafts or uh, other activities that maybe you used to do that you want to get back into. Um, so it's what can you do to build a sense of accomplishment? This is going to help you to feel um, less hopeless less helpless because you're doing things that are making you feel like you're in control and that you can be accomplished. So how do you build mastery? It's planning on, uh, you know, building that sense of accomplishment on a regular basis. It's figuring out how can I plan for success 
how can I do something that's difficult? You want to challenge yourself, but you don't want to do something that's impossible. You really want to work on how can I uh, be successful and build out my confidence to keep keep learning and growing. And it's gradually increasing that difficulty over time. You know, if you start with uh, you want to learn a new instrument, um, maybe you choose a, a, a song that is easier to learn than another one and building your skills that way. Um, and it's also looking for a challenge. Don't try something too easy. So it's finding those things that are just hard enough that you have to think and you can feel accomplished when you um, reach that goal or when you're able to, you know, uh, build that skill. So keeping it just hard enough that it's, you know, you have to think, but not not too easy that um, it does, you don't feel accomplished. So the C in this is coping ahead of time with difficult situations. So it's really trying to think about what is, what do I have coming up or what's a situation that's likely to prompt uh, really intense emotions or that it tends to be, you know, I, I don't handle those situations because my emotions get in the way. So it's coming up with um, some ideas, uh, problem solving ideas on how you might cope with that ahead of time when you're not really in that emotional, uh, uh, you feel like your emotions are taking control. If you have a plan ahead of time, that's going to help you to cope with it better. So what you do is you, you think about the situation that might prompt some more intense emotions and, diff and maybe unhelpful behaviors. And then you're imagining yourself dealing with that situation effectively. It's maybe rehearsing how you might cope with that, might be using some of the skills that you've learned in some past uh, episodes of, of uh, coping with COVID. It could be coming up with your own things that, that have helped in the past. So it's really rehearsing in your mind how you might deal with that in a more effective way. And then the last part is this uh, idea of taking care of your mind by taking care of your body. So it's asking yourself, am I taking care of my, my physical needs? Am I treating my physical illnesses? Am I taking my medicine as prescribed? Balanced eating, you know, I mean, eating foods that are healthy, that are, you know, eating on a regular basis. Um, Am I avoiding mood altering substances? So staying away from alcohol or other uh, drugs that uh, might, might uh, lead to more intense emotions. Sleep, making sure that you're getting enough sleep, not too much sleep, but not too little sleep, enough that's gonna help you to feel rested. And exercise, doing some sort of exercise on a regular basis, whatever works for you. So what I'd like you to do before we end today is I'd like you to take out a pen and paper or maybe take out your, your, your phone. So you have a way to kind of write down some ideas and how you might implement this into your life. So I'd like you to think about f at least five different pleasant activities that you could add into your daily life. So five things that you can start with. And you can always add to this list. So things that you could do right now, not if you had more money, not if you were, you know, able to to, you know, do more stuff, not if there was, you know, the, the, the coronavirus wasn't here. It's what can you do now? So five things you can do now. And then the next thing I'd like you to do is think about what are some things that are important to you, those values, those values that can help guide your goals. What's important to you right now? And how can you start working on some things that are going to help you to, to live a life that's, you know, within those values? Uh, I'd like you to next think about what's one thing you could do to feel like you're building mastery and skill and accomplishment. So to how do you want to get back into or something you'd like to try? Something you could do to learn to build your work skills or just build general skills. And then I would like you to think about, is there any situation coming up in the next couple of weeks that you need to cope ahead with, that you need to kind of plan for how you're going to deal with that in a, in a skillful and uh, effective way? And lastly, thinking about, you know, your eating, your sleeping, or how are you doing there, exercise? How are you doing with your physical health? So this is something that quickly you can think about 
you know, this list, what can I do to accumulate positive emotions? What can I do to build mastery? What can I do to cope ahead? And how am I doing with my physical health? Um, and then you can use this list to, as you think about it more, to maybe add to it and figure out how you can build a life that um, is going to help you to be less vulnerable to, you know, all of the stress and the challenges, you know, that are coming up uh, right now. So I'd like you for to thank you for taking the time today to learn about a new strategy to help you to deal with all of this. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.